All right, how's it going? I wanted to do a quick little leak code question. Um, there's one called House Robbers. I think I already solved this one. I wanted to kind of just explain my thought process to you all. Um, I might want to get a, a diagram set up that can explain some of this stuff. But let me read it out to you all. And I always re recommend try this for yourself. Try to solve it yourself. And then you can come and watch me try to solve it if you want. So this is called uh, 198 House Robber. You are a professional robber planning to rob houses along the street. Each house has a certain amount of money stashed. The only constraint stopping you from robbing each of them is that adjacent houses have security systems connected and it'll automatically contact the police if two adjacent houses were broken into on the same night. All right, so given an integer array numbers representing the amount of money of each house, return the maximum amount of money you can rob tonight without alerting the police. So basically you're given an array of numbers and you can rob every other house or, you know, you could put spaces in between the robberies if you wanted to. But you want to return the maximum amount, which happens to be four in this case. So one and three gives you four. And then this example, I believe the best you can do is nine, two, and one, right? So nine, two, and one. Now, looking at this, the in, there's about up to 100 inside this uh, list. So it's not too big of a number. And that can kind of change maybe how you think about this problem. Um, off the bat, like, I think you could probably use recursion to, to solve this with, um, it, but if every time you do recursion, you have to think, like, is this going to be a time limit exceeded, right? So I think with re recursion, either you rob the house or you skip over and rob the next house. That would be two to the 100, which is going to take way too much time. So the first thing that you kind of think of is, is this a... Oh, is this a um, dynamic programming problem? Can I use a memo to basically reduce the amount of tree traversals I do? And I think there might be a greedy solution to this as well, but I decided to solve it with recursion because that's like my, my favorite way to solve these problems, although it's not always the most efficient. But if I wanted to kind of show you how you can do this with recursion, um, this approach can be used a lot where you have like a, a starting state. In this case, it would be index zero so like we'll just say index zero here right so we're starting at index zero and you can choose to either rob index zero or you can skip it right so there's always like two cases um, when you're thinking about recursion here so either rob it or skip it so if you rob it you would probably need to skip ahead two indexes so go from zero to two if you skip it, then that means you have an opportunity to rob index one, right? So in this example, we have one, two, three, one. So one, this one would be two, three. And then if we go down here even further, let me zoom out just a bit. So now we're at index two, we can either rob it or we can skip it. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw some circles here because circles are always a great way to visualize stuff like so. All right, so if we rob index two, that'll put us at index four. And if we skip index two, that'll put us at index three. And I believe there's only zero, one, two, three indexes total. So this, this would actually be like our base case. Like we're done here, right? If you get past index three, you know you're done. So that's our base case. And whenever you're doing recursive calls, you need to keep track of that base case. And this one would do the same thing, either rob or skip. But since we're at the end of the array, I mean, you could just potentially just return whatever index three is, which is a one. All right, so this is one. And then here again, we can either rob or we can skip. So if I draw some more arrows here, like so, let me go ahead and draw this. So if we rob that, we'd be at index three. If we skip it, we'd be at index two. And then I think this one would also be like a rob or skip. If we were to rob this one, we'd go to index four, or we go to skip it, go to index three. Again, so like this is like the recursive function that I think that would work in my head. But again, like I said, you probably have to use a memo because you're going to end up getting to states where you've already robbed this this house, and you already know like what is the maximum amount you're going to get from robbing those. So what you could do is every time you rob, uh, robbing would be going to the left skipping would be going to the right. So every time you rob, you're going to return 
a number, right? So in this case, index three, I believe was one. One, or you could do this one, which was a three. Index two was a three. And then you want to add the current index that you're at to whichever one you picked and pick the maximum. So in this problem, like what you actually need to do is like every time you do this recursive call, you have to basically keep track of what was the maximum value that you got at that index, right? So at index, robbing index two or skipping index two, what is the maximum value that you can get from these two? In this case, you could either get a value of one, I think, so like this, or I could get a zero because when you go out of bounds, like you just return zero. So we know that when you rob, when you're at index two, the maximum amount of extra money you can get is one. So we kind of like can store that value in a memo. Whenever you get F of two, you know you're only gonna get a one and we can cache that. So now we know that like, we will always get one back. Okay, we're gonna memoize that. We know that F of two will always return one. And then later on in the recursion, if you go down here, we're gonna get an F of two again, but that's already been saved. We already know that when we get to index two, the maximum amount we can always get is gonna be one. So we can just go ahead and return that from like a memo here. Otherwise we go to three, and then what would robbing three give us? Robbing three would give us zero, one, two, three. That'll give us, all right, so robbing index three could potentially give us zero or one which means that we can cache that in a memo now. Now we're always gonna get back one here. So now for going back to two, actually I put the one here in the wrong place. We know that when we try to like get the maximum that two can give us, it's gonna be one, same thing here. And then we have to basically take the current value of index wherever we're at, uh, which happens to be, I think two is gonna be three, right? So two's, index two is gonna be three, plus, so if I do a three here, three plus the maximum, which happens to be that one that we stored. So in this case, we're gonna get back four here. Over here, we get back probably just one because you can only rob three and that's it. Okay, so now we take the current value of, if you skip one, because we're going right, it's either the max of four, or the max of robbing it, which would be one plus, uh, what is index one, two. So this would be three. I'm just confusing this, aren't I? I'm probably just making this super confusing, but when we see the code, maybe it'll make more sense. So this would be like a three. The maximum that you can get from this would be a three. And then you take the max between those two, which would be four. And then you can kind of memoize the one. So if you ever see a one again, you know the max is gonna be a four. And then over here, you're gonna do index of two, which is, what is that? Zero, one, two, a three, plus the one, I guess we'll give it a four, two, right? So you take the max of that, you end up getting one, I believe. I don't know if I completely did that right. I probably just made that super confusing. But anyway, let's just try to, <laughs> let's just try to code this up. So when you're dealing with these type of problems, you basically can just do a recursive memo function. So I'm gonna say function, um, I'll just say helper. And like in that algorithm we showed in the Excel, a Scala draw, we can just have that taken an index. And I'm just gonna go ahead and return index of a uh, helper of zero, okay? So that's gonna call the recursive function and we're gonna keep on calling this logic a little bit. So if index is greater than or equal to nums.length, then we return zero, which is kind of that base case I showed over here a, a while back. Um, otherwise, you want to basically get the rob amount. So if you were to rob, um, in this case, I'll call it take. I'll say rob house is equal to helper index plus two, because we want to skip over the next house if we rob the current house. And then we add in the current amount that we get if we rob that house. Okay, so this is the amount that you get if you rob the house. And then if you skip the house, I'll say skip house you are gonna do index plus one because you're not gonna get any money here, I won't add. So this is like the recursive call that we kind of did where if you rob, you're skipping an index and you're getting back the value. If you skip, you're just adding one to the index and you're getting back the value. And now we have to figure out how to get the maximum value. So I'm gonna go ahead and say return um, math.max of rob house and skip house. Now I wanna specify that 
right now, I don't think I'm memoizing anything. So if I run this code, I think it might time out. Let's see real quick. So this will work, but I believe if I submit it, it's going to run out of time on certain, certain solutions because this is just doing like a two to the end recursive call. So what you can actually do is you can make a memo, which I'm going to use a map here. And every time we get a, a result here, every time we calculate the max, I'm going to say memo dot, I think it's set. And we can just go ahead and set the index. And I'm going to paste that value and then I'm going to return memo dot get of index. And then also what we want to do is if we've already seen this value, so memo dot get index, um, I'll say if memo has the index, then just return memo dot get of index. Does that make sense? I think I spelled memo wrong here. So now if I run the same code, it's doing the exact same recursive call, but now it's keeping track of these the maximum value that you got from either skipping that current index or robbing that current index. And then we just return that max every time so that it doesn't have to do like two to the 100 comp, uh, calculations. Instead, it just returns a cached value if we've already seen that node. Um, and that's about it. I think if I submit this problem, it should hopefully pass. And it does. And there's other ways you can solve this. I think you can use like a, an array and just kind of loop through and do a dynamic program if you want. I've never really been good at dynamic programming. I just kind of use a memo because in recursion because it just makes more sense in my head. But this works too, and I believe there might be a greedy solution for this as well. But yeah, this is how I kind of solve this problem. And if you enjoyed watching this, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, whatever. And also join my Discord if you want to ask me questions directly or be part of a community of other people learning how to code. We got a lot of smart people in that community who are willing to uh, help you out. Yeah, have a good day. Happy coding.